Danzig, president of Springerly Joy. My company has the largest range of Springerly cooking molds in the United States. We have over 900 molds and 1900 images and I am delighted to be able to share with you some tricks about making Springerly cookies and using Springerly molds for crafts as well. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is show you how to make the dough. And in preparation for making the dough, it's important that you have everything in its place. So I've assembled here the various tools that we're going to use for the dough making and let's uh, look at a few of these things. We're going to have a couple of whisks, one that's small that will be one egg and we'll get into that in a minute. Then a larger one that I use to fluff the flour and the powdered sugar so that I don't have to sift. When you're removing the dough from the mixer uh, bowl, I like to use this flexible bowl scraper. It's extremely useful for manipulating heavy dough out of a bowl. Another thing that we use a lot in baking is what's called a bench scraper. Now this is also a dual thing that can be used for chopping uh, vegetables and so forth, but I like it because this particular one has a ruler on the side and that helps you gauge how thick your dough is. We have a half cup measuring cup which we'll use to add gradually the flour and the powdered sugar. And lastly, I've got this little teaspoonful of lemon flavoring oil which we're going to use in our recipe. We have four ingredients to make a spring early cookie. Very, very easy. The first ingredient is four large eggs plus a half of an, of an egg as well. Now, how do you get a half of an egg? Well, you take a, a fifth large egg and you beat it like this. And then, you don't have to be very scientific about it. You just take about half of it, eyeball it, and put it in with the rest of your egg. You can save the rest of it for tomorrow's scrambled eggs if you'd like. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add this to the mixer here using a wire whisk. And we're going to beat these eggs until they are a foamy, very fluffy consistency, which will take on a KitchenAid mixer somewhere in the neighborhood of six to eight minutes. Here we go. six minutes and the eggs are nice and fluffy. Let me show you real quickly what the eggs look like. Very, very soft. Almost like the froth that you'll get on a cappuccino, for example. The next ingredient that we're going to add is our powdered sugar. And rather than sifting the powdered sugar, I just like to run a whisk through it for a few seconds to break up any lumps that might be there. Add a little air and that enables the powdered sugar to be incorporated more easily into the batter. Having done that, the next thing that we need to do is get our half cup measuring cup. Go over here and start our mixer on a low speed, in this case a number two. You put it up any higher than that, you're going to be wearing your powdered sugar and don't want so here we go. You move right along in the process. And because you've got all of your ingredients pre-measured, you just keep moving right along. As, as soon as you see that powdered sugar get incorporated, mostly, you put it a little bit more in. And keep doing that until you're done. Change attachments. Having done this, 
with the whisk, put in a good amount of air, and we're going to move on to our pedal attachment because our dough is going to get thicker as we add our last ingredient, which is a pound of cake flour. We have that here. Again, I'm going to turn it on low. And continuing to put this low gluten, gluten flour in here, just as quickly as I can, just make sure that it gets mixed, because we want to get to the fun part which is actually making the cookies. Now we're really quite done. So now we've finished with making the dough. I'm going to remove the paddle. I'm going to go back over here and have a look at it. You see there's still a little flour in here. That's fine, no problem. We're going to take our bowl scraper here and use that to remove the extra dough that's on the paddle right now. And what we're going to do next is let the dough rest for about 10 minutes. Why? Because the flour is still being incorporated into the dough. And it's very sticky, as you can see, but it's going to be a little less sticky after 10 minutes. I'm going to cover this bowl with a damp dish towel and in 10 minutes, we'll see how the dough has progressed.